The book entitled The Voltage Effect discusses how to make good ideas great and how to take these great ideas and scale them across the globe. So the author was actually the chief economist of Uber and Lyft, and he discusses the various tactics and strategies he has used to scale products to become a global phenomenon. And as usual, I have my five key takeaways. Let's start with the first one. Is it the chef or is it the ingredient? He uses this analogy to isolate whether or not the business model or the business is dependent on key individuals or is it dependent on the actual product that you sell, right? So in order for you to effectively scale across various markets, you first need to understand whether or not the success of your business and business model is dependent on the people or the product. Main reason being is if you find out that you're very dependent on uh, key individuals, it may not make sense uh, to expand to a different market as opposed to if your success is based on the or dependent on the actual product or the process that you have in place it would be easier for you to scale in various markets and achieve the same level of success that's the first key takeaway the second key takeaway is he has the process what you call backward induction so he starts with the end goal in mind so first you need to determine the end goal in mind and work backwards on understanding what are the variables needed to hold through to get the same results or this, the desired results that you have. So for example, big, uh, starting with the restaurant example earlier, if you find out that you know the success that you have in your restaurant is mainly driven by the actual recipe, the food that you have to offer uh, in that restaurant, by, by understanding this, you ask yourself, can I have the same level of success in uh, a different country, for example? And you find out that, you know, asking yourself, uh, are, the are, are the suppliers there? Uh, do, do I have the right suppliers in that market that I intend to expand to? Are the recipes that I have easily uh, replicated by the chefs that I hire in that specific market? So you know, identifying what are the key ingredients or key variables that contribute to your success today and understanding it, whether or not that is replicable in the new market. By having a clear understanding here, you know, on the end goal in mind, the variables that you need to hold through can actually increase your chances of replicating your success. Uh, so certain decisions may cause unintended over reactions so one example given here is the insurance industry so they initially offered you know multiple insurance to car drivers uh, to, to you know uh, ensure that they uh, are covered in case they are they encounter any vehicular accidents and they were surprised that there was an increase in terms of the number of vehicle claims and this was driven because of a spillover effect well in fact people engaged in more risky driving activities when they found when they are insured mainly because they felt safe that they can always claim it in their insurance uh, so it drove the number of insurance claims up so again the key nugget of wisdom here is understanding the decisions that you make now are there any spillover effects um, that are positive or negative, right? So having a clear understanding on spillover effects can also help uh, in your decision making. The fourth nugget of wisdom is the concept of opportunity cost, sunk cost, and marginal utility. So each decision entails trade-offs, opportunity cost. Don't let, let past actions limit future decisions. So opportunity cost is basically the understanding that there are trade-offs involved. So if you, uh, for example, you're on a, a tour and your tour guide asks you whether or not you wanted to you know, visit a museum. So the opportunity cost, if you decide to visit a museum, is you trade off that time uh, rather than to go on a hike or whatnot, right? So in, this, in business, you first need to understand, you need to understand whether or not the decisions that you make 
uh, the time investment, the monetary investment, what are the trade-offs that you are foregoing if you decide to take that uh, decision? The second one is sunk cost. A lot of businessmen uh, let their sunk cost affect their future decisions. So for example, if you decide to put up a second branch in a new location, because you've invested so much time, so much capital there, even if you're bleeding, uh, you're in the red, you still continue to uh, you know, pour money to that location with the hopes that you can actually recoup the cost. So this actually should not be the case. Uh, this is a sunk cost fallacy, uh, wherein there's nothing you can do. You already uh, invested those mo time, monetary, in that specific uh, activity, or, or you shouldn't be uh, limited uh, with, with that sunk cost mentality to affect your future decisions. And lastly is marginal utility. Basically, the understanding that, um, you know, the investment uh, that you pour in to a specific activity may not have the same ROI or return on investment uh, as you initially had. So, for example, if you wanted to eat a donut, right, the impact to satisfaction is higher on the first donut that you eat and it diminishes the more donuts you eat because you lose appetite, you you don't want to eat another donut and so on. Similar to business, the more you invest in certain activities may not result the same um, return on investment uh, as you initially had. So it's a, a balance between whether or not there is still that marginal utility in the key investments that you are making versus the return that you're actually receiving. And the last key takeaway is in order for you to scale, you need to be able to scale your culture, right? And in order to scale your culture, uh, a clear vision must be um, made and a clear mission can actually attract and retain good talent, right? So unless you have a clear vision and mission, it's very hard to replicate that company culture uh, if you expand to various cultures. So for example, if your company values uh, integrity, right? So you attract people with integrity and at the same time ensure that people who are hired within your business share those same values and without even uh, instructing them to do so because they same, share the same values, um, you know, it contributes to the overall success of your business. So again, it's very important as well to scale uh, through culture. So with that, uh, those are my five key takeaways. If you enjoyed uh, this book summary, uh, The Voltage Effect, uh, I do a lot of business summaries every Sunday. Go to youtube.com, search Paolo Balinas. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. And um, I hope to see you again next week. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.